soil pH, get it right, and you have beautiful, robust flowers that produce bountiful fruits on our fruit-bearing plants. However, if you get it wrong, it could have detrimental effects to your plant as well. But how do we lower soil pH? Can we do things as simple as adding pine straw or pine bark to the soil to lower soil pH? Can we incorporate peat moss into the soil to lower soil pH? In this video, we'll use peer-reviewed research to dispel myths and tell you the truth about lowering soil pH. Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Warren, and you're watching The Plant Doctor. Let's get started. Before we talk about how to lower soil pH, we need to understand what pH is. All pH is, is a measurement of hydrogen ions in solution. We measure this as a negative log. To my right here is a pH chart. The pH chart ranges from 1 all the way to 14, with 7 being neutral, and anything below 7 all the way to 1 being an acid. Anything with a higher number than 7 is alkaline. So for example, if we look at a pH of 6 versus a pH of 7, a pH of 6 is 10 times more acidic. A pH of 5 is not 20 times more acidic because we're talking logarithmic. It is actually 100 times more acidic than a pH of 7. And a pH of 4 is going to be 1,000 times more acidic than a pH of 7. Anything with a pH higher than 7 we're measuring hydroxide ions in solution, and all that is is an oxygen and a hydrogen bonded together. One thing you need to understand is that once you start lowering soil pH apart from what it naturally is, this is going to be a constant process. You're not going to do this once and always have a lower soil pH. For example, when it rains, water falls through carbon dioxide, forming carbonic acid. It's been raining for eons and eons and soil pHs all over the earth vary in regions where it rains. So just because acid is being applied to the soil does not mean that it's always going to have a lower pH. The first topic I want to address is does pine bark and pine needles lower soil pH? Yes and no. I was able to find several articles from extension services that does say that pine bark can lower soil pH. Pine bark naturally has a pH between four and six. And so as these break down, we're releasing hydrogen into the soil and it does temporarily lower soil pH. Pine needles, on the other hand, do not. I was able to find several resources that would suggest that while on the tree in green, that pine needles are slightly acidic. However, once they turn brown, they lose their acidity their pH is more or less neutral around seven, and as they decompose, they're not doing anything to the soil in terms of soil pH. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, I know where a lot of pine straw is, and the pH is really low, it's acidic, but we need to remember that pine trees naturally like acidic soils. These are gonna be places that they're native to naturally, and it's not the pine needles causing the soil to be acidic, it's the acidity of the soil that's attracting the pine trees to grow there in the first place. Does compost lower soil pH? Compost does not lower soil pH. As you can see here, I found several references from peer-reviewed extension that would suggest that although temporarily you may get a minor shift to, uh, to alkalinity or acidity with compost, it really just depends on the pH of the compost to begin with and it more or less acts like a buffer. So a buffer is something that resists pH. So as hydrogen ions are being released into solution of the soil, there's hydroxide ions that's bonding with, therefore buffering the effects of the hydrogen. The next ingredient to lowering soil pH that I want to look into is do coffee grounds lower soil pH? This is one I hear a lot. Oh, I put coffee grounds in my garden to lower pH. I was able to find several resources that would suggest this is not the case. For example, a peer-reviewed article from the University of Minnesota would suggest that adding coffee grounds to your soil can enhance soil structure as those decompose. However, it's going to have little to no effect on soil pH. Coffee grounds naturally are 6.5 to maybe 7 
and depending on a couple of things, uh, the type of bean, how it was brewed, what type of water it was in. Um, but for the most part, we're talking about a narrow band of pH between six and a half towards seven, and that's just not low enough to lower soil pH. Something I've seen on social media sites, in Facebook groups, Reddit groups, etc., is that they use leaves to lower their soil pH. Now there's dozens of species of deciduous plants that drop their leaves and, and, and lay down on the soil, but I chose to look at the two most predominant tree groups in my area here in the southeastern United States, and those are the oaks and the maples. So we have more species of oaks and maples than any other deciduous tree. And for oaks and maples, there is no significant drop in pH when they're applied to your soil. So we've looked at several things that do not lower soil pH or have a marginal effect on soil pH. So how can we significantly lower soil pH? And one of the best things we can do is to add sulfur to the soil. And you may be thinking, well, Dr. Warren, we said earlier that pH is a measurement of hydrogen ions in solution. How is sulfur going to impact hydrogen ions? What happens is bacteria in the soil are going to combine the sulfur with water and oxygen to produce sulfuric acid. Hydrogen ions are released from the sulfuric acid, therefore lowering the soil pH. Now this is not an instant reaction. This is a biological reaction. It's not a chemical reaction. The bacteria need time to make this happen. So don't think that you can go out to your garden, throw some sulfur down, and 24 hours later, you magically have a lower soil pH. That's just not how it works. So when should we apply our sulfur? I recommend putting out your sulfur during the colder months. You wanna put it out in the fall or early winter because most microbes are going to be dormant during the fall and winter. However, that's going to give that sulfur time to mix in with the soil. And when those microbes wake up in the spring, we need temperatures really above 55 degrees for the microbes to start doing their thing. And once those soil temps hit 55 degrees, they start feeding on the sulfur. And as we progress through the spring, your soil pH will lower. Now there's several different products on the market that are sulfur and will lower your pH. And my recommendation for what you get is based on the application that you're using it for. For example, Espoma makes a great sulfur product. However, it's only 30% sulfur in the bag. The rest of it's just kind of fillers. And when you do the math on the bag for what it's costing you per pound to put out sulfur, it's gonna be around $20 a pound. So for doing an entire yard, this can get very expensive. However, if you're just wanting to lower soil pH in a couple of containers, for example, you have blueberries in them and you just need a lower pH for the blueberries, this is a great option because you're not having to store sulfur in your garage or your storage building because it does have a smell and you don't want that just sitting around. So if you're doing large areas like your entire yard, I would encourage you to go to your local farm store like a co-op and you can buy it in 30 pound bags all the way up to like 50 pound bags depending on your co-op and what brand they carry and your cost of putting it out per pound is going to be one fifth to one tenth that twenty dollars a pound so it's a trade-off with which one you get if you're putting out a lot i would recommend buying it in bulk from a co-op if you just need a little bit for a container run to your local retail garden center run to your local big box store pick some off off the shelf that's a spoma. Yes, it costs a little bit more, but you're not having to store that either. There is one organic component that we can add to our soil that does have somewhat of an impact on soil pH, and that is peat moss. So peat moss naturally has a pH of around 5.5, which is good if we're trying to go from a range between say six to 6.5, if our soil pH is around seven, seven, five, we add an element that is 5.5, that soil pH will come down. However, if you're trying to grow something in the family Ericaceae, the acid lovers, so azaleas, rhododendrons, blueberries, pieris, this isn't going to work because you're not going to get your soil pH low enough. I like to add peat to my soil. I have extremely sandy soils where I live, 80, 90% sand. Not so much for the pH lowering effect, 
but for the water retention that it gives. One suggestion that I've seen online in, in different forums is adding aluminum sulfate to your soil to lower soil pH. Now adding aluminum sulfate to the soil will lower soil pH. So there'll be a chemical reaction take place. It'll be very fast. However, you really need to be careful with using aluminum sulfates. Once aluminum levels get to a certain level in the soil, they're toxic to the plant, they can be toxic to your pets, it can be toxic to humans as well. Also, you're going to need an exponentially more amount of aluminum sulfate compared to putting out just elemental sulfur. So you're going to have to put out way more aluminum sulfate, five, six, seven times as much aluminum sulfate as you would just putting out elemental sulfur. And then you have the added risk of having aluminum in your soil at toxic levels. Another metal compound that we can use to lower soil pH that is safer than aluminum sulfate is iron sulfate. So iron is an essential element needed for plants to complete their life cycle. So if you run a soil test and your soil is deficient in iron, so you mail your soil test off, you get the results back, it's deficient in iron, and you also need the lower pH of your soil, iron sulfate would be a great option for that situation. However, most circumstances are not going to dictate that you need to add iron and lower the soil pH at the same time. So here again, elemental sulfur is probably your best bet. One suggestion I see a lot online, and one that's also backed by peer review research, so if you search extension articles online, you'll find some cohesiveness with this concept, is using fertilizers to lower soil pH. A lot of our fertilizers have sulfate already in them. For example, ammonium sulfate, calcium sulfate, iron sulfate, magnesium sulfate. We can buy all these as fertilizers and during the process of those breaking down, they are going to lower soil pH. When you buy fertilizers, I want you to get in the habit of looking at the guaranteed analysis. So the guaranteed analysis is required by law to put on the bag. All the other stuff on the bag is just advertisement to get the end user to purchase that particular product. Go straight to the guaranteed label. It's gonna tell you everything that's in there. It's gonna have nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium levels. Any micronutrients will also be labeled in there. But more importantly, with your nitrogen fertilizer, it's going to tell you the type of nitrogen fertilizer. And if you're trying to lower soil pH, it is imperative that you understand that the type of nitrogen fertilizer that you're putting down on your garden is going to have an impact on whether it raises or it lowers soil pH. For example, if the nitrogen in your fertilizer is a nitrate, it is actually going to raise soil pH. If it's an ammonium-based fertilizer, it's going to lower pH. If it's a urea-based fertilizer, Urea is probably the cheapest form of nitrogen that you can put out per thousand square feet. For example, it may cost you just a dollar per thousand to put out urea, where nitrates and ammonium may cost you two or three dollars per thousand to put out. Urea is going to break down into ammonium and that is going to lower the pH. Once the ammonia breaks down, there'll be a release of hydrogen ion in solution, thus lowering your soil pH. So what is my recommendation for the ultimate way to lower your soil pH? Add sulfur late fall, going into winter, preferably if you can, till it into the soil, get it mixed in really well. If you don't have a tiller, rake it in. If all else fails, you can just spread it over the top of the ground and it will eventually leak down into the soil layer when it rains and those bacteria once it gets above 55 degrees in the spring, will begin to feed on it, lowering your soil pH. Additionally, in the spring, use a fertilizer that is going to lower your pH that much more. Use that ammonium-based fertilizer, use urea, so you've got the sulfur and the fertilizer working together to lower your soil pHs. If you have a recommendation, trick, or hack that you use in your garden to lower pH, and we did not go over it here, let us know about it down in the comments below. We're a community of learners here on the channel and I would love to learn something from you, the viewer. Guys, as always, thank you for watching The Plant Doctor and until next time, happy gardening.